In this video, we're going to generalize the idea of a binomial coefficient into something called a multinomial coefficient. The four samples we've studied previously, ordered, unordered, with replacement, without replacement, are all binary in the sense that a member of our universe is either in the sample or not. Uh, so we're now going to think about samples where for each element in the universe, we can assign them one of k possible configurations. And so where we're going to start with that is with the multiset which, if you remember from the last video, is a function that assigns a natural number to each element of some set. So let's do an example before we get too far into the weeds here. Uh, if you remember in the last video, we talked about the distributions of activities on vacation. For example, we wanted to know how many activities we were going to do on Friday, how many activities we were going to do on Saturday, and how many activities we were going to do on Sunday. Now, we've decided that we're going to do one activity on Friday, three on Saturday, and one on Sunday. So kind of an important thing to note here is that we have chosen a multi-set. Right, the multi-sets were the things we were counting in the last video. We've picked one. We're going to do the multi-set one, three, one. We're doing one activity on Friday, three on Saturday, and one on Sunday. And now, rather than wanting to know just how many activities are in each day, we want to know which activities we're going to do each day. We want to count the number of ways that we can assign activities to each day. Well, we have to do one activity on Friday. And we have to do three on Saturday, and we have to do one Sunday. All right, well, the number of ways to choose an activity where we don't care what order they're done in, the ways to choose one of our five activities for Friday is five choose one. And the way to choose three for Saturday is going to be four choose three. The reason it's not five choose three is because we've already spent an activity on Friday. And then there's going to be one choose one remaining ways to assign that last activity. All right, well, let's use the formula for each of these. There's five factorial divided by one factorial, four factorial times four factorial divided by three factorial, one factorial, times one factorial divided by one factorial, zero factorial. And uh, this is not as bad as it looks. Some of this stuff cancels nicely, right? This four factorial cancels with this four factorial. The one factorials cancel, even though they're both just equal to one. If they were equal to something else, they would still cancel. Uh, and then zero factorial is just one anyway. So we can rewrite this number as five factorial divided by one factorial, three factorial, one factorial. And when I write this down like this, it kind of suggests another way we could have thought about this problem. Maybe this is the way you started thinking about it immediately. I like to draw these pictures where the things I have to choose are represented by blanks. Let's say that I shuffle all of my activities and I choose to do the first one on Friday. There's one factorial ways to arrange that. I choose to do the middle three on Saturday. There's three factorial ways to arrange those. And I'm going to do the last one on Sunday. All right, so there are five factorial total ways to shuffle all of the activities. And then since I don't care what order the activities are in within the days, I can just shuffle within the days. So there's one factorial, three factorial, one factorial ways to do that. Uh, what is that equal to? I guess that's important, right? Uh, five times four factorial, or sorry, just four, canceling out the three. One factorial is equal to one, so five times four is 20. There are 20 total ways to choose which activities we're going to do each day. This slide is going to be very technical, but we'll see uh, in a couple of examples how to translate this stuff to the examples we've done already. Uh, so we're going to let omega be any set whose cardinality is equal to n. That's the basic setup for all our combinatoric stuff. And we're going to let r be a multiset of cardinality n 
All right, so R is a multiset. That means it's a function that assigns each element to a natural number. And the elements that we're assigning to the natural numbers aren't elements of omega, they're elements of the set one, two, dot, 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 k. Uh, and we'll use our regular function notation R of k. We're going to rewrite that as R sub k. All right, and so here's the idea behind that. For each of the elements between one and k, we're going to regard the number ri as the number of elements of omega that get assigned to i. And you can think of it being assigned to i as being placed in a basket called i. And we'll explain how that relates to the previous example in a minute. All right, so here's the rest of the setup. f is going to be a function that takes omega and assigns its elements to each of the numbers between one and k. So I'm gonna take elements of omega and I'm gonna say, you're gonna get labeled with the number one, you're gonna get labeled with the number three, you're gonna get labeled with the number 27, you're gonna get labeled with the number k, and I'm gonna do that over and over again for each element of omega. I'm gonna do that until each number has received its multiplicity of members of omega. That's what the sentence says. The number of ways that I can do this, the number of ways that I can make this assignment is given by something called a multinomial coefficient. And the way we pronounce this is n choose r1, r2, dot, 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 rk. And it's equal to n factorial divided by r1 factorial, r2 factorial, r3 factorial, etc our k factorial. And it's subject to the condition that the sum of all of the ri's is equal to n. And that makes sense because you have to assign everything. Every element of omega gets assigned, so if you add up all the different assignments, you should get n total assignments. All right, that's a lot of technicality, so let's see how that applied to the last example. Our answer was the multinomial coefficient 5 choose 1, 3, 1, which we figured out was equal to 20. Omega is our set of activities. So we'll call those activities a one, a two, a three, a four, a five. Maybe a one is going to the park. Maybe a two is going to the beach. We identify Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with the members of the set one, two, and three. So I'm gonna call Friday one. I'm gonna call Saturday two, and I'm going to call Sunday three. And so the multi-set R is one, two, 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 three, because I did one activity on Friday, three activities on Saturday, and one activity on Sunday. All right, so what we've just done is we've counted all of the functions that map my activities into days. For example, one of those functions is the function that sends activity one to Saturday, activity two to Friday, activity three to Sunday, activity four to Saturday, and activity five to Saturday. So what I've just written down is one possible way to assign my activities to days, but that's not the only one. And in fact, what we calculated is there's 20 total functions that do this. That's the way to think about the previous example in terms of kind of the technical setup for multinomials. Here's another example. We're gonna use a multinomial coefficient to count the number of subsets of A, B, C, D whose cardinality is equal to two. All right, we've done this already. We know that this number is six because it's just four choose two, but I wanna show you how this relates to multinomial coefficients. So let's take the subset. Uh, let's just say AD, for example. All right, well, what we've done here is we have assigned A and D to the status of being in the subset, and we've assigned B and C the status of being out of the subset. We can call in the number one, and we can call out the number two. So what is this? This is a function that takes the set A, B, C, D, and for each of those returns a number between one and two, such that 
two of my members of ABCD are being assigned a one, and the other two of my members of ABCD are being assigned a two. Okay, well, this is a multinomial coefficient that counts all of these different ways of doing this. It's the multinomial coefficient for choose two, two, which is four factorial over two factorial, two factorial, which is just four choose two. So sort of the moral here is that when k is equal to two, the binomial coefficient is just the multinomial coefficient. They're the same thing. All right, one last example of um, something that multinomial coefficients can help us count. How many distinguishable arrangements are there of the letters in the word multinomial? All right, so notice that I said distinguishable arrangements here, meaning that I have to be able to tell them apart. All right, so it's going to matter where the M's, for example, get placed because there's two M's, uh, so I, I can swap those freely and I can't tell the word apart. So I only want to count the number of arrangements that I can tell apart. All right, one way of thinking about this is I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven letters in this word. Let's shuffle all of the blanks. I'm not shuffling the letters, I'm shuffling the blank spaces in the word, and I'm going to say that the first two in my shuffle get to be M, because there's two M's. There's only one U, so I'm going to let the third one be my U. The next two are going to get to be L. The sixth one is going to get to be T. The seventh is going to be I. Oh, and the eighth is also going to be I. There's two I's. Um, there's only one N, so that's going to be the ninth one is going to be N. Multi no. Uh, there's only one O in the word, so that's, that's not what I meant to draw there. There's only one O, and finally there's only one A. All right, so I'm going to shuffle my blanks, and then those are going to determine where my letters go. So let's say I shuffle all 11 blanks, and I get that the second and the tenth characters are going to be an M. Maybe the third character will be a U. Maybe the eighth and sixth characters will be an L. Maybe the fifth character will be a T. Maybe the nine and first characters will be I's. Now I have to start thinking about what I've not had yet. Uh, the fourth character can be an N. The eleventh character will be the O. And who is left? Seven. The seventh character will be an A. And that gives me an arrangement of the word multinomial. I, M, U, N, T, uh, L is 6, A is 7, L is 8, I is 9, M is 10, and uh, 11 is O. All right, now I could have swapped these M's, right? You wouldn't be able to tell it apart. So I don't care what order these M's are going to go in. So there's two factorial ways to arrange those. There's one factorial way to arrange the U's, two factorial ways to arrange the L's, one factorial, two factorial, one factorial, one factorial, one factorial. And all together, there's 11 ways to arrange all of my blanks. So the total is 11 factorial divided by 2 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 1 factorial, 1 factorial, 1 factorial, which is the multinomial coefficient 11 choose 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1. Uh, by the way, this is a big number. It is equal to 49 mil, nope, just kidding, 4,989,600. If we want to think about this in terms of counting functions, 
we are counting functions from the set 1, 2, dot, 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 11 to the letters in the word multinomial, M, U, L, T, I, N, O, and A, such that R, M is equal to 2, R, L is equal to 2, R, I is equal to, that's an I, not a 1, is equal to 2, and all other R's are equal to 1. A uh, quick note, if you didn't like the fact that in the other examples we were uh, assigning our elements numbers instead of letters, uh, remember that in a finite set you can rename the elements to be whatever you want. Um, so we could think of M as a 1, U as a 2, L as a 3. I just didn't want to do that because we already have numbers in our other set. Well, so the entire thing about multinomials is that they are generalizations of binomials. Uh, so there are multinomial theorems, just like there are the binomial theorem. For example, the trinomial theorem says that when we foil out the polynomial x plus y plus z to the nth power, we get the sum of all of the trinomial coefficients times the relevant powers of x, y, and z. Uh, and here's kind of a generalization of that. In general, the polynomial x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 plus xk to the n, each of the terms is a multiset. So for example, the term x1, r1, x2, r2, dot dot dot, xk, rk corresponds to a multiset, uh, 1 to the r1, 2 to the r2, dot dot dot, k to the rk, because remember, that's just how to choose how many there are of things. Then the number of them is given by the multinomial coefficient r1, r2, dot, 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 rk. So that's how the binomial theorem generalizes. And since the binomial theorem generalizes, uh, so does the recurrence relation that gives us Pascal's triangle, which becomes a pyramid in three dimensions, and so on.